What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today I'm going to show you how to import 3D objects into Spark AR Studio. So in the last video we created a 3D object uh, of chains and I want to use this I want to use these chains to import into Spark AR and try to make an Instagram filter out of it. Uh, so I have an empty project in Spark AR in front of me and what I want to do is I want to click on add asset here, import from computer. Okay so guys, so we had a little bit of a setback because Spark AR told me that this uh, 3D file is a little bit too big for it. So let's see if we can try to reduce this and optimize it. Okay, so if we select all the vertices here and we click on optimize here. And I've tried, uh, I tried around a little bit and the tolerance, if you put the tolerance to 0.25 centimeters, I guess we should be fine. All right, so um, this file should be fine. Uh, so now we have a 3D object here uh, and it's it has a little bit less vertices so it might look a little bit wonky. Um, but yeah, that's just because Facebook wants it to be and these AR filters uh, don't need to be that big. Uh, so let, let's just drag it into our uh, project here. And as you can see, it's just here with a flat material. And if we click on the full material, uh, we can click on shader type and we'll click physically based. And then we'll up the metallic part here. All right, so um, I guess what I want to do is I want to link this so that it moves with the face. So let's just click on here and add object and add a face tracker. And we're going to put our uh, 3D model into this face tracker. And as you can see, it starts moving. And then if we go back to our material, uh, let's see if we can use a texture here. Uh, so what would be cool is if we could give this like a, an iridescent texture. So if we go click on choose file here and I have some iridescent textures laying around. So let's just go and pick one of those. Let's go with this one. All right. So if we up the roughness here. And what I want to do now is I want to have uh, an environment. So if we click here and we choose like an HDRI image, something like this. We can actually see that it's starting to, to get like a little bit of a color shine, I think, I, I guess. <clears throat> So what I want to do now is I want to go to window or to view, sorry, and open the patch editor. And I want to add a loop animation. And this is so that, uh, and we'll also add like a transition. And basically this is going to uh, decide what's going to be looped. Um, but we need to enter what we actually want to go and loop. So let's just click on our 3D material. And click on this one <clears throat> and if we click on the arrow here it will appear into our patch editor so if we drag on this one here and then click on the end for 360 that's the wrong axis <laughs> so if you look at it now it's actually rotating properly but what we um <laughs> okay so um the problem now is i didn't properly uh center the 3D object. So let's just go back into Cinema 4D. Click on the chains, click on coordinates. And as you can see, this Z axis has to be put on zero. Let's just save it up and <clears throat> export it once more. Okay, so we're back into um, Spark AR here. And let's just go and click on the rotation segment here again. And as you can see, now it's properly rotating around its own axis. So, and I put the scale up to two, so it is l just a little bit bigger. Um, and I think I want to fix the material now, or at least fix, I want to uh, make it so that there's some cool lighting effects going on. So if we go and add object and add a directional light, and let's just pick a color. Let's go with something like magenta. Magenta. 
And if we go back into the material of this, uh, let's just remove the environment and remove this ORM texture. And as you can see, there's like magenta light going over the chains now. So I want to copy this directional light and move it a bit to the side here. And let's rotate it a little bit like this. And let's make this cyan. And then let's create one more. And let's have it at the bottom or something. And let's make this one maybe like green. Like this. Okay, so now what would, be, what would be cool is if we could rotate these lights as well to make the lighting a little bit more interesting as this. And I want to make this duration four seconds. So it's not that big. So it's not that fast, I guess. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to go and add another loop animation. And a, another transition. I'm going to create an endpoint here as well. And let's just click on the first directional light and put the rotation in the patch editor here and connect these up. And as you can see, this one's rotating now as well. And let's just make it a little bit slower. And if we make this a 260 degrees. And let's just add two more transitions. And grab the other two directional lights. And link these together as well. And let's see if we can make this one maybe like 360 here. And this one in the last axis and see what happens. All right. So I made the uh, chain a parent again of our face tracker so that we can move it with our face. Okay, so the next thing we want to work on is, um, well, the it should go around the face instead of like, um, well, crossing his face, I guess. So let's just remove the patch editor for now. And what, the way we can do this is we can create a background uh, which will cut out the person, I think. Um, so let's see if we can do that, actually. Uh, if we go to camera and we go to segmentation and we click on person, we can actually create a texture that... Uh, masks out the person here. So if we go in add object and add a rectangle, we can scale this so it has the fill width and the fill height. And create a material for it. We just call this background. And as you can see, the chains are already like not showing now. So if we click on alpha here and we choose the person segment texture and we invert it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think this is as far as we can go, sadly. So the way we can actually properly make this into a face because I don't want to leave this tutorial. This is all, by the way, guys, this is all an experiment. Like I've never done this before. So I'm just making it up as I go, I guess. Um, if we remove the chains here from the face tracker, so they won't move again, so they won't move on their own again. And let's see what happens if we... Uh, let's just grab the patch editor. Okay, so the way I want to rotate these, let's see. If we rotate this 90 degrees, like this. And then if we rotate this part, nope. <laughs> And let's just see if we can rotate this. All right, so guys, I figured it out. Um, see what happens if we add a face tracker here and add a face mesh to this. And we'll give this the same material.
Okay, so if we remove the canvas, I guess what we can do is we can cr try to create a transparent filter. Um, set these back to zero. So, and I guess we can just leave it at this and make it like a ghostly thing. So one thing, the last thing I want to do for uh, this face mesh, I want to duplicate this changed material and call this face mesh. Click on the face mesh and make sure that our material is actually the face mesh. If we go back to the material here, um, I want to go and... Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is, uh, if we go to the texture here, I want to make this a little bit smooth. So within the um, face assets that you'll get from Spark AR, link is in the description, you'll get the face mesh mask. And that will make these edges a little bit softer. And let's make the opacity of this uh, face mesh a little bit lower. Maybe add it to add. Yeah. All right, so um, let's just make one more face mesh. And put it into the same face tracker and add a material to this. Call the material retouching. And click on retouching here, which will smooth out the skin a little bit. And move this on top of the first one. And I guess there you have it, guys. Uh, let's see what it looks like when I use my own webcam. Okay. As you can see, my room is a little bit dark. Um, but yeah, this... Sh I kind of like it. Um, so I hope you learned something, guys. Uh, I especially did. Um, I'm going to recolor these to the Dreadlabs colors and put this on my Instagram. Uh, so, if you have, uh, so if you feel inspired, please uh, let me know. If you have any suggestions for tutorials or um, maybe improvements on how to fix this filter, uh, please let me know in the comments or you can join us on Discord. And I want to thank my patrons for supporting me. Uh, they make me be able to create more videos for you guys, more content. And if you become a patron, you'll get a 15% discount in Dreadlab Swap Shop, as well as access to all of my project files from all my tutorials and Discord privileges as well. So yeah, there's that. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.